Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and if you're one of the systems in my wormery, you start out low and you work your way up. <laughs> Basically, the oldest systems end up on the top, and you know, space allowing. You know, at this point, I'm kind of at capacity. <laughs> the the newest systems all get lined up down here. So, one of my oldest systems, actually, actually the oldest system that I've got where I'm active actively composting is this system right here. The phase that follows active composting in my wormery is usually foraging, which is what this system over here is doing and has been doing for a while. Hasn't been fed for a while, worms are being left to pick through the scraps, but here we're still actively composting. And we had actually at one point graduated this system to foraging and we decided, you know what, let's just get this thing back into active service. We gave it another feeding, reactivating it, turning it back into one of my active composting systems. And it was 10 days ago, I received its 16th feeding, and today, assuming that there's little or no leftovers, we're giving them some more food. So let's get this system up onto the bench and get to work. I know that I'm only speculating, but I think I'm correct to assume that this system has probably got very little, if any, leftovers, because what they got last time, 10 days ago now, was a whole bunch of strawberries. Ooh, did you see that? There is a little bit of a insect colony that has moved in here. I thought that I had actually solved this problem in another of my systems by removing a bunch of the covers. And you know what? I bet you the worms just moved <laughs> out of that system and into this system. I'm wondering if the solution is just to do away with these little hiding spots for them. It might be. All right, so I see signs of wear on this top covering sheet of paper. I can't recall what it looked like a week ago or 10 days ago last time we checked in. Maybe they're working on it. Let's get this thing out of the way. I can see a little bit of a divot or a little bit of a depression down here through the middle of the system where the food was applied. I'm not sure what I'm seeing here, but it looks to me like it could be mites. So in a lot of cases, I'll wait and see what's going on in the bin before I come down here with the food. But you know what? I had this stuff that I thought would be perfect for this system. Stuff that I know is going to go pretty quick. And stuff that I know that i got to get rid of because i got coffee piling up again. The one thing I probably won't do is I probably won't add the coffee filter. Perhaps we'll just drape it across the top as an indicator to show us where we last fed. But I don't think we'll, um, we'll try to incorporate it as additional bedding. And you know what? I'm wondering if leaving some of the covers off this thing might actually do it some good because I feel like the moisture level in here might be a little bit excessive. I'm sure the worms don't mind, but I don't think it needs to be quite so damp. I always thought that using the bubble wrap would allow for a little bit of air moving below it, but it doesn't really seem to be the case. It almost seems like the bubble wrap covering in a lot of my systems is the one that does the best locking the moisture in. I think it was because of some of these larger leftovers that I decided, you know, let's keep the foraging, not the foraging, let's keep the composting in the system going. And, you know, stuff like that might take a little longer. Things like this will take even longer. The husk of a mango seed. I could see a worm hanging out in there. We had placed all these slower composting food items down low within the bin and then I believe we stacked all the uh, the freshly added strawberry out right on top of that and I don't see a single sign of any strawberry so I think I was correct to assume that that would be gone by now after 10 days I don't know why but a lot of times I just like to keep those seeds out of the the mango seed husk right in there with the husk <laughs> just weird so I just jammed what fell out back in and yeah such such a high degree of moisture totally unnecessary down in here here's some clumped together cardboard or 
paper or whatever it is. I guess we'll just try to help it along a bit by tearing it up. So yeah, you know, I feel good about coming in here to give this system a little bit more food today, help it keep moving along. But I believe when we cover up, we're probably going to reduce the amount of coverings somehow. Perhaps we can just even put a fold into the top covering plastic. Now even though we've created ourselves a nice little opening here where we could just drop in today's feeding, I'd still like to hold off on adding today's feeding uh, for long enough to give us a chance to just check out the rest of the system a little bit and see what else we could find as far as leftovers piled up down here within the feeding area. I just see all these different things. Yeah, there's all kinds of large chunks of cardboard and stuff. I believe that it was probably because of all this cardboard that I'd like to see continue breaking down further that I thought that it would make good sense just to help that process along by continuing to add a lot of feedings. So I mean besides those leftover slow composting food items like those mango seeds, there's also you know large chunks of cardboard paper, all stuff that just needs more time. It definitely doesn't need this much moisture so I'm actually thinking leave the plastic off for a round, you know, just maybe put that piece of newspaper that was draped over the top back on, cover it with that little piece of uh, paper bag type material, and perhaps skip putting the plastic back on, at least for a while, maybe let it go a week or ten days, let it air out a little bit, let some of this moisture flash off and evaporate, and I got a feeling it'll probably do the system good certainly doesn't need to be this wet. Look at all these worms. It almost seems like checking where the food and stuff is is uninteresting because looking out here further is where we're really seeing all the worms hanging out. Yeah, there's a good number of worms in this system. Oops. All right. Look at them all. Now, I wonder if, you know, this is the side of the bin where the label is. It's the side of the uh, bin that faces into the room. And I've speculated on a number of occasions that perhaps the reason some of my tropical species of worm, like these African night crawlers, they gravitate towards the side of the bin that faces into the room where there's just a little bit more warmth than the side of the bin that faces the, uh, the wall where a little bit of the cool air from outside sneaks in. I just wonder if we'll see quite as many worms on the other side if we explore over there. So let's just take a peek before we dump in today's feeding. If we could find any other large chunks of stuff to incorporate into the rebuild of the feeding, we'll keep it together. At least we'll know where to find all that stuff. Okay, a lot of moisture everywhere. I got a feeling that this system uh, will benefit greatly from being uh, aired up like this, aerated a little bit, and and also left uncovered with uh, without plastic for a little while. The moisture will remain for sure, for the most part. It'll dry out a little bit on the surface, and then we'll blend in that dry stuff, and we'll try to help things here become a little bit less damp. So we got ourselves quite a good population of worms in this system. They're all over the place. I don't think I saw that many more worms on the other side than I did here. There was a good number of worms here as well. But um, let's, let's press on. Let's get these little guys fed so we can let them get back to work. Just keep seeing things that I probably should fish out if we're going to try to focus the feeding area into a single spot. I mean, this right here, I believe, is like the stem of a banana, like the inner core of the stem after the majority of it has been already eaten or just fell, fell away from it. Because anything larger like this, I don't think I'd have stems of leaves this big. These have got to all be um, banana peel stems. So yeah, all these um, fast breakdown items we're putting in today will probably be gone in no time, possibly even by the next time we check in here. And then we'll find a whole bunch of this leftover stuff over here too, for sure. Leftover bedding, obviously, all of this cardboard. 
will probably still be here for the most part next time we check in. But by um, keeping our food supply going in on top of this stuff, I think it'll uh, help a lot in terms of generating worm traffic down here. We'll throw all these older, slower food items down here too. This is yet another piece of the mango seed husk, but it's so far along already. The other half of it broke away. And you can see it breaking down quite nicely. This thing I saw earlier, I couldn't figure out what the heck it was. I still don't know what it is. But whatever, it's something softer, some sort of vegetable matter, it's getting there. So here's more stuff. I don't think that's cardboard though, I think that's paper. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe it's, um... yeah, actually, you know what? I think this uh, had been the um, top covering newspaper, maybe, just based on the the printing that's on it. So banana stem, banana stem, banana stem, banana stem. That's a stick. <laughs> Definitely a banana stem. Good number of banana stems still floating around here, needing a little bit more time. And even if you look carefully, there's still a whole bunch of um, leaf stems. A lot of times those are the, I guess, the one trigger for me that says, you know what, once you don't see any more of those, you're pretty much um, close to the finish line. You're almost ready for harvesting the castings, but as long as there's still stuff like that floating around, probably best just to give the system a little bit more time, let it all continue. Okay, we've opened up a pretty good size hole here. Let's drop in today's feeding. Somewhere between the uh, nice new food we're putting in next and all of this old food, we'll place in all this coffee. This way we can kind of blend it in with what's below, and then after we put in what's on top, we can blend that a bit too. To me, it just seems like the coffee is better off if it's combined with the neighboring materials. And I guess at this point, the coffee is also serving as a little bit of an insulator from these still somewhat frozen chunks of lettuce. I, le I, I left them out at room temperature for about the past hour or so, so they're not that frozen, but, but this nub is probably still pretty much a nice cube. But, all right, we're more or less done here. As we cover up, I think... I think we are going to just leave off the plastic. We'll bring back that newspaper, and then we'll bring back that piece of paper bag on top of that, and I think that'll prompt a good amount of drying in here. And I'll be curious to see how things look next time we come in here. I would assume that all this material on top is just going to sort of dry and become hard and clumpy, and that'll be a, a little bit of a disadvantage to its um, breakdown. But I think it'll uh, ultimately just benefit the the entire bin at large by not allowing things to continue on being quite this damp. And you know, don't forget at the same time, all that lettuce we just dropped in here is also going to thaw and let out a bunch of moisture in the process. So there'll be no absence of moisture in this system, I believe. It'll be kind of nice to see things a little bit drier than they are right here, right now. So back with the... Uh, the partially eaten top covering newspaper but rather than putting the plastic back on I think we'll just set it off to the side I just want to make sure we haven't doomed any hitchhiking worms that might still be stuck to this stuff there was that one worm wandering the top surface but other than that one there were no others and I'm kind of hoping that without that plastic in between Maybe a lot of these flying insects that are kind of making themselves at home in here will not find it quite as hospitable. Maybe things will dry a little bit on the top surface. Maybe that'll be enough to get these guys to leave. I'm starting to wonder if I should bring in my little zapper. <laughs> Run it for a while to maybe catch some of these guys and wipe them out. Because uh, I don't want to have a, a little thing turn into a big thing down here. But... Um, that's a topic for another day. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. Thanks for joining me on our little check-in with the African Nightcrawlers, now 154 days of age. That's 22 weeks, getting its 17th feeding now, after a 10-day pause since the uh, previous feeding. And I don't know, with the, the stuff we just gave them, I'm sure we could probably check in here in another 7 or 10 days, and maybe we'll do just that. So hopefully I'll see you then. But until then, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. 
And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.